Jimmy, Tone, and I have all known each other for a while, and it may be a little bit heated on stage, but uh, I think all of us have some, deep down inside, it might not be on the outside, but we have some warm feelings towards each other on the inside. So thank you, Jimmy, and, and thank you, Tone, for, you need a shirt for your microphone? <laughs> So since since Jimmy you know didn't want to continue, I'll point out like there's a bunch of people fighting within Bitcoin Cash. That's a sign that it's not centralized, right there. Like the fact that he denies that is just baffling to me. And without putting words in his, his mouth, okay, he didn't say don't read the primary text, but he seemed to say that the primary texts don't matter. Of course, the primary texts matter. Yeah, should we just have a question? Yeah, let's have a question. Yeah, who has the question? Right here. You're next. We have one right here. You're next. Sorry. Hi, Roger. Um, my question is, you're saying that uh, Bitcoin Cash is decentralized because there are a bunch of people of, like fighting each other, which is actually good, but what's the difference between that and a board of a company that, you know, is a centralized company, but it's a bunch of people that's fighting each other? Is it, how, how do you explain, I mean, for that? Yes, the, the board of the, com the company eventually gets to make a decision if nobody gets 51% of the hash rate or 51% of the economic power to go somewhere, then no decision gets made. So there isn't actually any one person that can be the final arbiter there. So for Bitcoin Cash, you have the company, I mean, you have people debating and, and you know, proposing things, and, but then the community is the one that, that, that's what you're saying, right? And I, I invite anybody to get involved in the Bitcoin Cash community. There's plenty of people to debate, not you with online. There's no shortage of that whatsoever. Thank you. Maybe we'll do All right, ready? This guy comes, and we'll start. So, one more question, and then we'll uh, we'll see if we can go another thirty minutes. So, my question is, how do we get non-blockchain, non-crypto people into the whole blockchain world? Because I feel like a lot of non-blockchain people want to enter this world, but they don't have the means to or the way into it? Uh, answer it uh, less than a minute, and then I'll answer it as well. I defer to you first, I'll go second. Right. Um, at the moment, it's I think one of the challenges to get new people into uh, Bitcoin is because a lot of people don't understand what Bitcoin is now because of companies like Bitcoin.com that are trying to sell you a fake Bitcoin like Bcash or Bitcoin Cash, I'll do it for this debate. Um, so I think there's a lot of confusion also, again, people like Roger, who are very instrumental in the early days and getting everyone onto Bitcoin. And there was all this unity pre-2015 when Gavin Andreessen got this crazy idea that the blocks can't scale. Uh, back then, everyone knew what Bitcoin was. Bitcoin had 95, 98% dominance. Everyone was unified. Hey, you gotta accept this currency. It's government resistant, it's censorship resistant, it's great. And right now, you walk up to an average person in crypto and he's gonna try and sell you his ICO. He's gonna try and sell you his currency. He's gonna try and sell you a fake Bitcoin. So that makes it a lot harder. So I have a simple answer. If we want people to use cryptocurrencies, we have to make them useful as currencies. And not just useful as currencies, more useful than every other currency out there in the market, which means fast, cheap, reliable, uncensored payments for the entire world. Bitcoin Cash has it, Bitcoin Core BTC does not. And if you want an actual practical example of how Bitcoin Cash is useful and more useful than other currencies around the world, my favorite website to spend my Bitcoin Cash is purse.io. If you don't know about purse.io, go and visit it today. You can save 30%, 30% on every single purchase from Amazon by using Bitcoin Cash. That means if there's a $50 microphone you want to buy, if you buy it in Bitcoin Cash, it costs $35. 30% off Amazon using Bitcoin Cash. And purse.io is another fantastic example of one of these companies around the world they wanted to use cryptocurrencies as a currency. They paid all of their employees in BTC since the earliest days of Bitcoin. And in December of last year, when the BTC core developers got what they wanted and the fees became high, they were popping champagne celebrating. Businesses like purse.io and bitcoin.com and many, many others around the world were busy switching to Bitcoin Cash because it works as a currency. And today, all of purse.io's employees are paid in Bitcoin Cash. Everybody at Bitcoin.com is paid in Bitcoin Cash. Anybody who wants to use a cryptocurrency as a currency is using Bitcoin Cash, not BTC. All right, uh, so we're done with questions. So can I get five minutes? 
Yes, you have. Five minutes. Okay. So uh, let me tell you guys a story how I got into Bitcoin. It was a few years after Roger. I first heard about Bitcoin from Max Kaiser around 2011. And here's how I heard about Bitcoin. WikiLeaks is about to go down because they can't afford their servers. And it was suggested that WikiLeaks should start accepting Bitcoin for donations. That's how I first heard about it. And that's when I realized, wow, this is actually something useful. Uh, because it was able to provide a method of funding that was censorship resistant that the government would never let you use. But it was able to do that. It was able to uh, move without you know, censorship, avoiding credit cards, avoiding PayPal. That was a use case that stuck in my mind. Sure, I didn't run out and spend $100,000 buying Bitcoin at $1, uh, the way Roger did. He was able to do that. I guess he, ju he jumped on it earlier. I, I liked the use case, but it wasn't enough to get me in. What did get me into Bitcoin? It was the first quarter of 2013 when I saw the events of Cyprus. When I watched people in Cyprus, and we're here in Europe, we're not that far from Cyprus, in the Mediterranean, when people that have saved money all their life, they had over 100,000 euros in a bank, and all of a sudden the government comes in and confiscates half of your money above 100,000 euros. And all of a sudden, another use case stuck into my head. Oh my God, Bitcoin is unconfiscatable. If I hold my Bitcoin, the government cannot take it away. Now I had two use cases. I had the unconfiscatable use case, and I had the censorship resistant use case. Then, uh, while at the time I was following Ron Paul and I was starting to become a gold bug, um, I kind of liked the idea, but again, working in finance, reading enough of economics, I'm, I was still 50-50, you know, I grew up, I did financial engineering in university, you know, uh, Kate, look, it's hard for me to argue against uh, the, the central bank, and here's why. We've had fiat money and credit. I understand that you know our money is depreciating, but we've had this system for the last 100 years. How do I know that we would have the internet today if it wasn't for the central bank system? I don't know. I can't argue what didn't happen. So there is an argument to be made whether we should be on hard money like gold or on a fiat system. But I, but I did enjoy that one. And recently, I know Roger, you were talking to Jimmy about reading the Keynes book. I didn't read Keynes book, but the book that I read was the Bitcoin Standard by Seyfetina Moose. Have you read that book? You really should. It just came out very recently. It's an amazing book. And he made the case why sound money and gold is so important, okay? Because it creates that saving space that uh, and this is why the world should be on a, should have been on the gold standard and why the world can go to a Bitcoin standard. Those are the three primary reasons why Bitcoin exists: unconfiscatable, censorship-resistant value transfer, and the fact that it's sound money that will appreciate. Okay, now it's great that Bitcoin is still pretty easy to use, and our core developers are making it a lot faster and a lot cheaper. But technologically, Bitcoin just can't scale on chain. Because if you scale it on chain, and if you scale it on chain with incompetent developers, we're all on this boat. We believe that the operator of this boat, the captain, is competent at uh, driving the ship around the Mediterranean. I believe that competent people should be programming Bitcoin core code. And when people are incompetent, those people end up leaving by themselves because they're no longer useful. Or when they believe that there is a fake Satoshi out there who's a real Satoshi, they need to be immediately removed from making dangerous changes. Okay? Now, Bitcoin will scale off-chain. It will be a better payment mechanism. But if you want a really good payment mechanism today, go use the Venezuelan peso. Nobody wants it. It's great for transactions. The moment you get the peso, you immediately go and buy something. So that's what you want if you want just a payment method. Bitcoin is more than a payment method. Give it some time and it will scale. Thank you, time. Sitona, are you happy to have a little more back and forth directly? Okay, great. So, All right, take your five minutes and... No, 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 I, I meant a little bit of question and answers back and forth directly. And we'll, we'll do our best not to interrupt each other. So, and I'll say what I think about you think, and if you see a point, hop right in. Go for it. Go for it. 
So I'd like to point out that so many of these BTC supporters, they're confused and think that you can separate the store of value from the monetary use case. But it's, ask yourself, right? If for people that are in Europe, you're using euros as a store of value. If you're in the US, you're using dollars. If you're in Japan, you're using yen. The reason you use those currencies as a store of value is because you can spend them anywhere. If you weren't able to spend euros anywhere or spend dollars anywhere or Russian rubles anywhere, you wouldn't use them as a store of value. And we've seen on the BTC chain, they have intentionally undermined the ability to use Bitcoin to pay for things. And if you undermine the ability to use it to pay for things, you've then undermined its usefulness as a store of value. So those are two sides of the same coin. If you destroy something's usefulness in commerce, you destroy its usefulness to be used as a store of value as well. And that's exactly what's happened on the BTC chain. And he was talking about competence and people, we should have people that are competent. The people driving the BTC bus development took it from nearly 100% market share to all the way down to 35% market share. Now it's back up to about 50%. You would be fired at any other business if you took it from 100% market share to less than half. You'd be fired instantly. And that's exactly what happened within the crypto coin community. More than 50% of the capital within the crypto coin ecosystem went to altcoins. That was them firing the, the, and firing the BTC developers and showing they don't have confidence in their roadmap. Because ask yourself, you have a cryptocurrency that's fast, cheap, and reliable, or one that's slow, expensive, and unreliable like BTC, you don't have to be a genius. You don't have to have read the primary texts on economics to figure out which one is more useful in commerce, which one is more useful to businesses, and which one has the ability to undermine government's control of the, of the money supply. It's the one that actually works as money. Bitcoin Cash, what say you? Well, I, I do want to say that, uh, Roger, you just referred to Bitcoin as a business. It's not a business. The business uh, is using it. Uh, 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 you refer to Bitcoin core developers. We agreed we could jump back and forth a little bit, right? Uh, sure. And I, 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 refer, rephrase, I refer to businesses using Bitcoin. So, uh, Bitcoin core developers can't be fired because they don't really work for anyone. They work for themselves. Bitcoin is a decentralized protocol. Anybody is welcome to program on it, right? First of all, just because uh, the hype got out of control and people started loving crazy old coins. And I have to say, you were probably responsible for that because I was the one that took a picture of your presentation at Anarchapoco in 2016, where for the first time, you on a big screen showed which old coins you have diversified into. So if I could jump in. I was sounding the alarm because Bitcoin had 100% market cap in the entire world. It was on track to strip away every government's control over the money supply all over the world much, much faster. We've been delayed by years because of the stupid scaling debate within Bitcoin. And now we have a thousand one stupid ICOs and altcoins out there. And if this guy's trying to blame me saying I'm promoting them, no. I want a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash for the entire world so that each individual has control over their own money not a bunch of stupid scammy ICOs. Some of the ICOs are good, but a bunch of them are scams. Some of them are horrible. We don't need a thousand and one different cryptocurrencies. We need one that works really, really well for everyone all over the world. So this is a bunch of nonsense to try and blame me on the altcoins. I've been Bitcoin's biggest cheerleader from day one. And as Tone admitted, I was a big part of the reason Bitcoin's so popular around the world it is today. Well, guess what? I did it the first time, and I'm doing it again with Bitcoin Cash. So if you like that message, go to Bitcoin.com and get started today. I, I, was a, I was a Bitcoin cheerleader from day one that I got into it, which was a slightly later day one. And I remain a Bitcoin cheerleader, never changing my mind, never suggesting another altcoin, whether it's an altcoin that I believe is a better Bitcoin or not, or even if it had happened to have the same Genesis bot. You see, when people believe in alternate chains, when people believe in alternate chains, if you believe in multiple, whether they're proof of work coins or multiple altcoins, or whether you, if you believe that a split of Bitcoin is a viable alternative, then you do believe in the fiat system of money printing. Because having a hundred altcoins viable is like having not no single hard money at all. There has to be one. The world will migrate to one currency that is decentralized, the way we have only one internet. Hey, Tony, it just won't work. Are you willing to switch to something other than BTC? I have no reason to. BTC is the most decentralized, not only from its development, it has the smartest people. And I, I believe so the in question, the development. The question it has is, the are biggest, you willing to switch if there's a reason? Um, if there, 
If my money is not in Bitcoin, it would be in the S&P 500. So you're not willing to switch to a different cryptocurrency no matter what? Absolutely not, because I believe that Bitcoin, because Bitcoin is miles ahead in its decentralization against any other alternative, that if Bitcoin loses the store of value property, no one will ever believe that another blockchain will ever be better store of value because no matter how, what kind of, no matter what kind of propaganda you have that bitcoin 50% of all bitcoin is in the hands of the very few it is still a thousand times more decentralized than the very few hands that hold any other coin including bitcoin cash yeah. maybe that's a big difference between myself and tone tone and correct me if i'm wrong you're saying that you would never switch to anything other than btc did i get that right as a, de as a decentralized uh, blockchain, I would never put my value. I, I'll use it as a, I'll use it as a transactional currency, but I will never use it as savings. I'll, I'll use it like the Venezuelan Boulevard. Okay. So, gentlemen, uh, I have been asked to moderate by the organizers. We are given about four more questions, so I'm gonna jump in the middle and. And if I can you address that, go ahead. Respond. So, so I'll be right here on stage. I'm wearing my Bitcoin Cash shirt. I'm doing every single thing I can to promote Bitcoin Cash because I think it's the cryptocurrency that has the ability to bring more economic freedom to the entire world. But if I see a different one that I think has a better chance than Bitcoin Cash to bring economic freedom to the world and undermine government's ability to control people's money, I will gladly switch to other cryptocurrency and start promoting that. And some people can argue whether or not Bitcoin Cash or BTC is the real Bitcoin. Whatever your opinion on that is, my opinion is that the BCH coin is the one that has the best chance of bringing more economic freedom to the world in the shortest amount of time, and that's why I'm busy promoting it today. And if there's another coin that you think has an even better shot of that, convince me of it and I'll start promoting that coin. But I, I think at the moment, Bitcoin Cash is the best tool the world has at this very moment to bring more economic freedom to the world, okay. and that's why I'm here. Thank you. Tone, has a response? Uh, just very quick, look, about a year ago, about a year and a half ago, there was a, when Bitcoin Cash split, that was pretty much the fifth attempt to hard fork Bitcoin into a bigger block. Look, I'm sorry, Roger, that Satoshi put in a one megabyte block limit. At the time Satoshi put in a one megabyte block limit, he kind of assumed that it would be simple to just make it bigger in the future. But the reality of the situation was, that when the Bitcoin core developers did their research and they initially thought about going to a bigger block, they realized that there is no way it was going to happen. You can't force people to update their node. And they knew that the community was going to split. So they made the safe, they made the smart decision not to even try. And what they had to do was find a better way to scale. Not to, uh, not to mention that a bigger block is technologically dangerous. Now, uh, that was the, there was a four attempt. First there was Bitcoin Classic, then there was Bitcoin XT, then there was Bitcoin Unlimited, How then you Bitcoin- How about about the bait and switch with Segwit 2X? Then, oh, I'll, 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 I can mention that. Um, then there was a, uh, Bitcoin ABC came out, and then eventually Bitcoin Cash split following Bitcoin ABC's roadmap. Okay. When, it, what, I'm sorry, what, when, when the split was happening, they had 80 or 90% of the mining power. They had most of the, they had most of the media on their side. They had most of the businesses on their side and the users still won. The users wanted a free coin that was not gonna be controlled by the miners and the businesses, the nodes won. I can talk about Segwit2x if you like. And we can look at exactly what happened with the market cap. Bitcoin lost, BTC lost the market cap war. Everybody's busy building on their favorite altcoin and just because people want to print their own money and convince other people to buy it doesn't mean that Bitcoin is losing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm shocked to hear people applauding that. So Bitcoin is competing in the market place against altcoins and against fiat currency. And if you stop and think for a moment, look at it. Bitcoin had companies like Microsoft and Expedia and Dell Computer, and they were on a roll getting every sort of business all over across the planet accepting and using Bitcoin. And that adoption came to a screeching halt when the blocks became full. Not only did it come to a halt, it reversed. Companies that previously were accepting Bitcoin stopped 
stopped accepting Bitcoin. That's a disaster those, for the adoption of cryptocurrency. Those companies accepting Bitcoin always bothered me. Expedia accepting Bitcoin. Microsoft People using Bitcoin, Bitcoin bothers the them. The reason why that bothered me, the reason why that bothered me is those companies don't give a shit about Bitcoin. When you send Bitcoin to those companies, they sell it on the open market and drop the price. You think they care about the dollar? Companies want to use whatever's useful to them, and they're gonna use the currency that's the most useful. Tone, and I would like- Use it! Tone has a response, and then if you could ask a right. question to Roger. Um, wait, Cryptocurrencies what? are meant to be used as currencies. If you, if the person you are sending your Bitcoin to don't care about it as a store of value, don't give, don't drop the price of Bitcoin. Don't give them the Bitcoin. Why? I don't use Purse.io personally. I don't need to be, you know. Hey, tell uh, when was the last time you bought something with Bitcoin? All the time. What did you buy most recently? With Bitcoin, oh, I spend it all the time. I what did you buy most recently? I sell Bitcoin to people and buy cash, and I spend. Bought dollars with your Bitcoin most recently? Correct. I I, so I sell sold your I sell my Bitcoin. I sell my Bitcoin, Bitcoin to people that care about Bitcoin. Wait, oh, I, I will reply in that, hey, you know why Bitcoin is losing the market cap war? It's because Bitcoin doesn't have a marketing department. Look how many people are wearing BCH clothes around here. Yeah, and so let's Look talk about that. Marketing that. All the hats and the sunglasses and the BCH stuff, we paid for it in big Dash Correct. to our supplier. Correct. Finish your okay, question. I've been arguing with people all the time. Look at Dash. Look, Dash, how did Dash start, right? Some guy instamined 20% of Dash for himself and had a lot of money to promote Dash. We're not and that, Dash. Oh, uh, B Bitcoin Cash is just as bad. And then, um, and then that wasn't enough money for him. So he decided to take 10% of all the mining and feed it into his own little foundation Michelle. to promote it more. And that Other was dollars, what was the so last he, time? So he last time you bought something physical. One second, tone. Roger. Um, finish up tone. So, so I do not like the government to know that I even have Bitcoin. So I will never spend my Bitcoin where my actual name is used in the transaction. So anytime someone is selling me Bitcoin gear, the watch that I was wearing that I just put down, I bought that in Bitcoin. If you're selling Bitcoin t-shirts, I'll pay you in Bitcoin for it. We'll sell I'll you pay, some. I'll only pay for physical products. I'll pay for VPN services. I'll pay for other services. But if I gotta put my name or my address, I don't use that. I have more respect for Bitcoin. I think Bitcoin should be used peer-to-peer, -peer, not through some government system. Thank you, Tom Roger. So here's an example of practicing what you preach. All these hats you see people wearing, they were bought with Bitcoin Cash. The sunglasses were bought with Bitcoin Cash. These pants I'm wearing were bought on Purse.io with Bitcoin Cash. The socks and the shoes, Bitcoin Cash on Purse.io, and even my underwear. With Bitcoin well, Roger, but here the only thing I'm wearing that wasn't bought with Bitcoin right. Cash is my Bitcoin well, Cash T-shirt, because well, Jihan Wu gave it to well, me. But, here, but, but my point, you're actually in my point, right? You are, you have a store. You believe in Bitcoin Cash, so when people pay you in Bitcoin Cash, you're not immediately selling it on the open market for fiat currency. Is that correct? Of course not, because I want exactly. the entire world to exactly. use cryptocurrencies as currencies for every transaction, every paycheck, every bill, everything, every day of the year in every country. That's the goal. Okay, last two minutes. I'm going to let the gentleman hash it out, and then I am calling it. I will let you know. Tone, I'll let you start. Well, I was going to say, see, you're putting yourself in a position of a business that respects cryptocurrency. When you're paying to a business that doesn't respect cryptocurrency, that's not going to do anything to your currency Tone, other than drop the price. You don't respect cryptocurrency as a currency. You think it's a crypto store of value. That's the difference. I think that if you're going to scale, you, ha you cannot put the most fundamental properties of Bitcoin at risk. Tone, do you think scale, reliable transactions are a fundamental property of Bitcoin? If they are done in a dangerous way to even give the people an idea that the unconfiscatability, censorship resistance are being threatened do you know a single because person? of the incompetence of your scaling model, do you know a then no one will ever had their Bitcoin Cash or even altcoin transaction in commerce censored. 
So Bitcoin Cash, because they have no competent developers, haven't made any serious changes onto their protocol. They are still doing. Can you answer my question, Bitcoin? Every question was, do you know anybody using Bitcoin Cash that's had their transaction censored? Absolutely not. You're still. Hold on. That, you're still hold on. I know more than I can count that had their transactions censored on BTC. Okay. We're, the mempool was full and, full and their transactions were dropped. Because of you and spam. Okay. That's we're, a lie. We're at two minutes. I'll let Roger take the first question from the audience. It's uh, not on. You can use mine and then uh, Tone will respond. Bitcoin Cash is functioning great. They haven't made any changes. They're still using core code. Uh, One of the examples. They I just doubled the block. Hi. Uh, 32 times the block size. One, two, one. Uh, Even more technologically dangerous. My name's Lori. Are you a technologically I'm competent person to evaluate right, that tone? I have a question for both of you. I've interviewed enough of them to be able to speak competently about the issue. Tone and Roger? Roger goes first. Uh, I have a question for both of you, actually. So um, I'm not currently a Bitcoin investor or anything. I'm, I'm new to this world. And I was considering yesterday, you know, thinking about getting into it. But what I've just seen on stage just looks like a... A, a real shouting fest and it's making me nervous and I'm, I feel I agree may I make yeah I uh, my question is um, I came here to find out, out about the politics and the vision of cryptocurrency so I'm wondering if you can both tell me why I should believe in it having seen what I've just seen all right one minute answer, so so you heard two people on stage here. One, Tone Days here said he's never switched to anything from BTC ever. I will use absolutely any tool I have available to me to bring more economic freedom to the entire world, whether it's Bitcoin, cash, or anything else. I don't care what it is as long as it works. If it's useful, I'm gonna use it. And that's why I'm here promoting Bitcoin Cash because it's the most useful cryptocurrency for the entire world. And I wish the BTC camp good luck. But you're on the wrong economic path to bring you more economic freedom to the world because a peer-to-peer -peer electronic store value, I don't see how it's going to do that, whereas it's very clear how a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system does it. So if you want more economic freedom to the world, take the tools that are available to you and use them to build that economic freedom for everybody in the world. If you want to have your store value club, go ahead. I'm not going to stop you, but that's not interesting to me. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll have an answer as well. So again, I'm not sure what you were interested in, but were you interested in, in cryptocurrency as an investment? Or were you looking at cryptocurrency to use in your business, right? So if you are looking at cryptocurrency as something you're gonna hold for the longer term and use it when you have to or use it when you need to, then you have to do a lot of research and decide where are you gonna put your money? Because the only cryptocurrency that I have seen so far that is worthy of holding for more than a day is Bitcoin, the real Bitcoin. The one that's worth $7,000 today or 6,300 or whatever, right? Because I believe that holding on to that Bitcoin will, you will preserve your value. Putting your dollars into any other crypto, you can, sure, you can buy any cryptocurrency whether it's Bitcoin Cash, whether it's, I can name a dozen others. If you're just gonna buy it and immediately spend it, who cares? But if you're actually gonna hold on to it, you really wanna buy the one that's actually gonna be around in a few years, the one that has most decentralized, the one that has the smartest people coding it in a decentralized way, and the one that the people voted for with their nodes to stay decentralized. Thank you, so much. And we have a little tiny bit about the fundamentals, if I may. Let's move to one more question. Tone, Actually, tone didn't answer the question. So, okay, we're moving to the next I'm question. Not here to, I'm not here to tell you what to buy and what to sell. So, let's actually, to have a little fun, we will take question. four questions. So, both boys get to do two each. So, let's and I'd like to ask Tone to answer the, at least the next question. Tone didn't gets to answer, answer the last this one question. first. The third one, Roger, back to you. Fourth one, Tone can end on. I know. I want to ask Roger. And first. Yep, question, Roger's going first on Roger. this one. So BTC uh, market cap dropped from 90% to 35. But it's back to 50 plus. Yes, of course. But uh, why you are only blaming that on the block size, not on greedy people who were buying shit coins, just Woo! a triple. I'm, I'm not blaming it on the block size, I'm blaming it on the problems that the block size came. So if we look at the fundamental reasons why I invested in Bitcoin in 2011 is because all my life as a young man, I was studying economics books, and I studied the theory of what the origin of money is and how something becomes used as money. And it has to have certain properties in order for it to become usable as money. It has to be durable, easy to 
recognize, easy to transport, limited supply, it has to have these specific characteristics to make it useful as money. So I read about the theories in the books, and for anybody that doesn't know, I spent some time in federal prison in the United States. And while I was in federal prison in the United States, I got to see firsthand within the prison economy that the theories I read about in the books were true when it came to the origin of money. I watched people start using tobacco, top ramen suits, and postage stamps as money in the prison. And there's an entire prison economy. And I had the theoretical evidence from the economics books, and then I had the empirical evidence right before my eyes from the imprisoned economy that the theories I read about in the economic books were right about what makes something useful as money and the origin of money. Thank you. And Roger. that's why I invested in Bitcoin in 2011, because it had those fundamental characteristics that it made it useful as money. Yep. And that's why I'm investing in Bitcoin Cash today, because it, it has those fundamental okay, we're characteristics at one minute. Thank you. that and made it useful as so. money. PTC no longer does. Right. Thank you. So I heard from, Char minute. I heard from Charlie Schramm that when he was in prison, mackerel cans were used as money. And I would honestly rather have mackerel as a store of value over Bitcoin Cash. But to answer your question, um, to, to answer your question, um, one of the reasons why that happened is because look at who was fighting uh, scaling. Look who was fighting against the core developers. It was the big companies, okay? Again, someone like Roger. The people using Bitcoin! Someone, someone like Roger has a lot of influence. When he started buying old coins and shit coins, a lot of people followed. A company like Coinbase, they started, they, they didn't want to be a Bitcoin company anymore. They became a shit coin company. Again, Coinbase, BitPay, all of these companies were all of a sudden that uh, Brian Armstrong has more Ethereum than he has Bitcoin. And, the, and these were the companies that wanted Segwit2x and they didn't want just Bitcoin. They, they were greedy, they wanted to make more money and they wanted to feed all of those old coins that are absolutely useless onto other people and that's why the market cap dropped. Thank you, Tone. And to the next question, it will go to Roger first. So listening to you both guys, so I'm realizing what all the battles inside creating a lot of crisis. And if you, Roger, create your own solution, the reason why you, in most cases, was banned, because you are quite annoying and creating a lot of crisis. You create your own solution, but you're still attacking the Bitcoin. People are free to choice. You say that. You're not the company, you're not the government, and people make choice what currency they will use. You're providing another one possibility. But right now you're creating the campaign. And this creating a lot of annoying crisis. How I see. And this is a scary people. They all supporting the cryptocurrency. They think it's the future. But why are we creating the crisis? People can choose. Everyone can choose. It can be Ethereum, it can be Bitcoin Cash, it can be Bitcoin. All the people making mistake. But one, one thing I would like to ask you, so why, if you create your own decision, you so seriously attacking Bitcoin? You made and people made choice. So Bitcoin Cash has the fundamental characteristics that make it more useful as money than the BTC version of Bitcoin does. That's an argument, not an attack, and I'm sorry if you can't understand the difference. I'm understanding the difference, so, but you make your own decision and you're still using the name Bitcoin. If you think the Satoshi vision is nice, you can, can create the Satoshi coin. So I think I've given clear reasons and evidence and logic as to why Bitcoin Cash has more Bitcoin-ness about it than the BTC version. And if you disagree, I invite you to lay it out and write a blog post or make a video or give a talk on it at some point. Thank you for your question. Thank you, Roger. I am doing my best to ignore all old coins, including uh, Bitcoin Cash, but in this environment, it's still a little bit difficult to do. Eventually, uh, it'll be clear. All right, and the last question, this is gonna go to Tom. So, first of all, thanks uh, for both of you for uh, you know contributing to the free oh, Ross oh, stuff and I'll really uh, right big ups for both of you. And, I mean, uh, the thing is, I, I, we just came back from the Lightning Hack, hack Day in Berlin, and I, I feel like uh, some of the, the steps that are happening with the Lightning Network are really happening quickly now. And I feel like Bitcoin, the BTC version, it, it just needs some t extra time. And, and uh, you know, I wish as a company we run Voltoro, it was really hard because we, we started the company with this premise like oh, quick transactions, cheap and this and that. And during this time, we had to 
bend ourselves to make it work and a lot of business models fail because they build on that but I think though they're coming back because there's this time in between where the Lightning Network will uh, really, some of the use cases are amazing, like really, really quick, being able to take orders straight from the order book with, uh, without trusting the exchange, to be able to send a transaction and snap an order as a market taker really quickly, but while keeping custodianship of your private keys is, is, is wonderful. So I think, you know, what, what's, your, what's your take on the Lightning Network being able to, in the future, do, do all these things? Because it's happening really, really quick, Roger. I, it's Tone first and then Roger on this one. All right, so I am uh, so far, again, I haven't, I've been meaning to do a podcast getting a bunch of different Litecoin developers from all different Litecoin implementations on one nice two, three hour long stream to talk about it some more. I'm not an expert in the Lightning uh, network. I know uh, it was like about maybe three or four months ago when Jimmy and I were talking about it on a YouTube channel and um, I looked at it and said, hey, Jimmy, do I have to create a lightning node in order to use lightning because that's crazy. Because I know how difficult it is to set up a Bitcoin node. It's not crazy difficult, but it's difficult enough. You gotta download the entire history of the Bitcoin blockchain. You gotta connect it to your router directly. You gotta change some settings. You gotta open some ports. It's not very clear. So I, I, I got a little scared if the average user has to go through all that challenge to use the lightning network, that's gonna be a disaster. But that's not what it is. We're gonna have wallets on our phones, exactly the way we have our wallets now. And that's gonna be your lightning node. It's not the same node as a Bitcoin node. And you can route your transactions and it will be able to scale to thousands of transactions a second. It will crush Visa. It should be incredibly cheap. And yes, at the end of the day, at the end of the month, whenever somebody feels like it, they will settle. Now, the reason why it's taking so long is because it needs to be done right. You can't mess up the underlying properties. Bitcoin is gonna be a trillion dollar market cap soon. It's not a toy. It's not move fast and break things. That might be great for your little website, move fast and break things. Even my YouTube, youtube.com goes down. But uh, you can't do that with Bitcoin. You gotta take your time and you gotta get it right. Thank you. Roger, response? Uh, I'm not sure of your name, but I, I wanna thank you for mentioning Free Ross. Uh, that's an example of the horrible things that are happening in the world. Free Ross, free every single person that's in prison for victimless crimes. Every single one. If there's no victim, there's no crime. And that's why I'm so excited about cryptocurrencies being the tools that we can use to empower individuals to say no to violent people that want to use violence against peaceful people. And in regards to your question about the Lightning Network, I am more than happy to use anything that's useful. And I look forward to the day in which the Lightning Network is useful in commerce, and I will gladly use it. So thank you for contributing to that. Woo! Thank All you, right. Roger. And, and if I can add one last thing, I'm, I'm out of time, everybody. I have to check out off the boat. So thank you all very, very, very much. Thank you, Tone. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you for your question. Oh, oh, right, right. I'll try I'll try and answer the last one. One, one, one last one, and then that's it. I think should also be more private. Last but, question, sir. But yeah, I've got a question. We have to right. question. go off. Right. One minute each. So before you guys uh, failed a little bit to answer the question about what the movement is about, and that's fine. It's a heated debate. But it's a human rights movement if you think about the core values. So one Bitcoin, you can give away one 100 millionth of a Bitcoin, one Satoshi. How about all of us here who have decent amount of Bitcoin, we give 100 million people one Satoshi each because your argument is all based on adoption. Adoption for adoption, adoption for price. Why don't we be philanthropists and not evangelists and stop wasting our money on these fucking cruises? I agree. Go ahead, go first. And we've already built the exact system he's talking about. If you head on over to free.bitcoin.com, we will give anyone anywhere in the world some free Bitcoin cash right now today on chain, something that's impossible to do on BTC now. Okay, and Tone, response? I guess. I don't want to sound insensitive, but... Um, Thank you all very much. Can I ask you guys just one question? I'm sorry. I never ask questions. I, I have one, one more question. But if you send me an email, I'll reply by... Just ask, each other ask, well, the question is this. I went on the cruise the other day, and the guy said, what's this Bitcoin company? How do I find out about it? Bitcoin.com. I casually said Bitcoin.com, but I felt a little bit weird about that because that's not the Bitcoin that I know. And I feel like it's a little bit deceptive. How do you like? How do you deal with that? I, 
I don't think you're a bad person, but why do you accept that people who are going to look for Bitcoin are going to end up at Bitcoin.com and think Bitcoin Cash is Bitcoin? So it's really simple because Bitcoin Cash is Bitcoin. And I gave clear evidence and logic and reason why the case, that's the case yesterday on the cruise. Hopefully that video will be on YouTube tomorrow. It's the first time I've given that presentation publicly. Please watch it. And I'd, I'd love to check it out. We've known each other for years. Right. I'd love to have a conversation with you about that later. Thank you all. Sorry I have to run. I'm just going to add one response thing. And then today, today you were willing to bet $1 million on a stupid fucking dick bullying contest. Hey, all right. A response. No, seriously. This... No, sir. Response. Okay. Okay. And then we're done. No, sir. Don't add that to no. someone in need. Sir, 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 sir. No, we're done. I, I'm just going to do a one final response. Hey, sir. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. One final response. All right, so we I, have the last response. And then I agree. I find it very... This is why I'm here on stage. Um, I initially turned down this debate because I didn't want to make it a skeptical a spectacle. I didn't want to give Vlad Roger the stage because this will be on my YouTube channel, seen by a lot of people. But I feel like I have to because people are getting confused and they do end up going to Bitcoin.com and buying Bcash thinking that it's Bitcoin. Now, to answer the other question, to answer the question on giving away a Satoshi to a hundred million billion people, um, I don't think that's a good idea. Um, I know everyone wants to be a philanthropist. I'm gonna go down to Venezuela. I'm gonna give every single person in Venezuela a hundred dollars in Bitcoin. And honestly, I don't think that's the right way to do it. I really, really don't. I think giving away your Bitcoin to people that don't understand it, all will happen is that Bitcoin will probably be lost permanently or that Bitcoin will immediately be sold. The best way to do it is to educate people. People need to understand it before they buy it. I used to I used to be like Roger and every single person I see I would give away like you know two to five dollars worth of Bitcoin. I stopped doing that years ago. I'm like, you know what, Bitcoin is too important to lose another Satoshi. We need as many of them around as we can. Um, and I only give Bitcoin now to people that actually respect it. Thank you guys, thank you. That's fantastic.